All right. How are you getting on? You well? You well? It's you well, my loved. It's me, Tony Catwell. Live. Well, not live. But I was here in person. Uh, but here on the Headstuff Podcast Network, the fine people of Headstuff welcome me home. I was doing a podcast here a few years ago. My good pal, Mark Jago. Remember Alan here in Headstuff? was like, have you thought about doing a podcast? And I was like, yeah, can I do a bit monster? He's like, oh. <laughs> you know? Uh, but they were, they've been amazing. And I love working with them, worked with them for a long time. My other podcast, Young Hot Guys, is here on Headstuff. So it made perfect sense to merge our beautiful minds. And also, look at how fucking good this looks right now. I've got two gorgeous lights. I'm speaking on a Shure SM7B. That's a good microphone. Someone Joe Rogan uses. Bring that microphone close to your face. Jamie, Jamie, pull pull your fucking pants down. Jamie, pull that shit down. <laughs> Jamie, let me see your little winky. Joe, I don't know. Let me see the little winky. Wee willy winky runs through the town. Look, it's a new energy. <laughs> There's a new energy in the room. And I did my Bake Off podcasts here. So this room has treated me very well. And hopefully um, I should have got a bottle of champagne to smash off the fucking wall here to christen this as the first Headstuff podcast. But look, instead what I'm doing today on this podcast is I'm going to ask myself... <laughs> I'm going to ask myself a lot of questions. I'm going to ask myself Vogue's 73 questions that they ask, uh, you know, gorgeous w- women. You know, but I'm going to ask myself this, you know, because, I mean, they're probably not going to come around to my gaff, you know, and ask me 73 questions, you know, walking through my gaff, kicking fucking nappies out of the way, you know. There's just nappies bobbing up everywhere. Do you know what I did? Terry was livid, right? Terry's got a very, she's like a hound, right? She's a hound. She's a very strong sense of smell and justice. But she's a very strong sense of smell, and she takes the young fella swimming once a, once a week, and I do the washing and I do the laundry, you know, which essentially means reader. They don't get done. I do wash up uh, the laundry, right? The washing clothes. What's the Irish way of saying washing clothes? It isn't laundry. I don't like saying the word. It's not our rhetoric, okay? But she, um, so I do the laundry, right? She came home with a load of big wet bag. Full of wet clothes and all this stuff. She be, she'd be getting in the pool with the young fella as well. And towels and all. And we had people over. And so I put the bag in. We have a press exclusively for bags. Right? Waste of space. Waste of space. But it's too short to fit my brooms. Right? My, my multiple broom collection. Right? It's too short to fit the brooms. And, you know, and it's like long. And I don't know what to be putting in. And there's no shelves in there. Right? I might just put shelves in. Anyway, so it's full of bags. So I was like, ah, I'm just going to put this bag of laundry, wet laundry, in there. And then immediately, I mean, I wish I could forget my traumas the way I can forget putting a bag of laundry in a fucking bag press. You know what I mean? Just instantly gone. As if Paul McKenna himself. Um, Paul Kenna? Hypnotist. If he was like, sleep. Forget about the bag of shit in the in the press bag, right? Put it in there. I'd say two hours later, Terry's like, so what's that smell? <laughs> There's a smell of damp. And I'm like, yeah, maybe it was, uh, maybe it's because of my jeans. Or maybe it's because you, <sighs> maybe it's because you, you're, you're thinking your fella looks very good today. You know, it's a gross joke. Gross joke. Anyway, look, um, there was a smell of damp um, off the fridge area where the press bag is. And she's like, smell damp. That means rot. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then she was talking about it for days. <laughs> this is how we communicate. She was talking at me about it for days, being like, oh, I'd love to know. Can we can pull the fridge out? There's definitely a smell of damp. And um, a week went by. Smell was getting worse. And then it was like moments before she's bringing the young for swimming again. And she's like, where's all the thing? And I'm like, I have no idea where the bag is. I have no idea where the bag of uh, wet clothes is. I have no idea where his togs are, right? She finds it. She is. She was so, she was so mad. She was so mad. You just like, how would you fucking, you fucking, you fucking, back of shirt, you fucking, fucking, and she's like, you did not even think. I've been asking what that smell is and where to talk. And I was like, I just couldn't piece all that together. It was gone. That information was gone, right? And then she kind of was, you know, came to Jesus a little bit with it, and we were we were cool again, you know. I think I might have either tiddled her or patted her lightly on the bum or something like that. I don't know what it was I did. Somehow it seemed to work, right? And then we were cool again. But then, right, 
this is a week to that a week to the day of that happening right as we're recording this she texts me like where's the togs and I text her again being like I'm not even messing I put it back in the bag press where we keep all the bags I'm not even joking I'm so sorry you know but she asked me to do a bit of an odd job for her in town today so I did that led with that oh I did that thing by the way and I paid for that so I got that sorted um, and I think by the way I'm not even joking I put the shit back in the place where you told me not to never to put it again you know so we're doing really good but anyway this is my point Vogue can be coming in being like what's that smell it's togs and I don't remember where I hid them today okay they could be anywhere in fact this whole floor is just a tiled over pile of togs okay we got togs, wet togs coming out the wazoo. There are microbes. There is a microorganism growing out of this. So they're not going to come to my house anytime soon. So like anything, I thought I can ask myself these questions and have a great time doing so. So that's what I'm going to do. So if you haven't seen them, Vogue do 73 questions where they follow, you know, Jennifer Lawrence around or, you know, and they, I don't know. That's the only one I watched. Um... And they ask them these questions and it's it's and they they it's a really weird style where it's almost like the cameraman is asking these questions. But I know a little bit about ADR. Right. So I know that that's not possible, but they time it very well. And it always looks one shot and it always looks like, hey, what's your favorite time of day? Hey, are you a sweet or savory person? You know, it's the same guy asking these voices, asking these questions in that voice. Definitely not the cameraman, but they time it very well, I have to say, in between the, the answers. And I'd say they do it. It always looks like it's off the top of the dome, right? They've obviously prepared them all. And because they're professional actors, they've learned it all. They probably even walked through their house 16 times that day, figuring out exactly how they're going to deliver it. And what it comes across is this effortless, just fucking perfection. My gaff is perfect. I'm witty, you know? Come round. Look at no nappies anywhere that you can see, you know? There's no pee that has been hoovered over multiple times, you know? Hey, guess what? Even on the Mac setting, that Dyson is not sucking up that mashed in pee. Tony, you're going to have to just bend over and pick up the pee. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. But you're going to have to do that, right? None of that shit. All the gaps look immaculate. So, look, I'm going to ask myself some questions. Here we go. Uh, number one, what's your favorite time of day? My favorite time of day, I have two. I have a, I, I have a, a soppy answer and a real answer. And a real answer. <laughs> like... I don't mean to be getting so deep already, right? My favorite time of day is probably putting my kids down, right? It's probably the the hour where I spend half an hour putting the kids down and then I have half an hour for myself before <laughs> before Terry comes down, you know? I feel like I'm getting my family time and my independent time all wrapped up in one neat little hour, right? It's like put the kids down, tell Sonny a story, Make, I make up stories every single night for him. And when he's like, what? I have to even do a bit of a Lord of the Rings being like, this isn't the ending, right? The ending's going to come up in a bit, but I am going to be ending the story soon. He's like, okay. And I'm like, now come to the end of the story. Paw Patrol are happy. Sonny saved the day yet again. I'm coming to the end of the story very soon. And then Sonny goes home and goes to bed. And that's the end of the story. He's like, what? You didn't even fucking tell me that was the end of the story. What? So I have that from him. And from my daughter, she just falls asleep immediately. Like she'll actually like just fall asleep on you, and then you put her down. That's gorgeous, right? And then I've already tidied the gaff because I do that after dinner. And then I'll go down and I'll like boot up Spider Man Two for like half an hour, you know, while Terry's still parting around. Before we want to have our evening together, I'll play a bit of games. I play a bit of games afterwards when she goes to bed. But uh, I have like a, an hour there where I've had pure family time with the kids, and then I have pure independent time. I also like hanging out with my wife, but unfortunately, that's not a regimented part of the day. Number two, what is your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is still the belief that like one thing can solve everything rather than consistency. I like to believe that one tech product will give, will boost my output capabilities. I like to believe that, you know, one gym session will fucking solve everything, you know. Uh, But, you know, buying something that I think is going to fix something. I still have a belief that I can pool all of my hopes into one thing rather than I just find the idea of doing the same small bits every single day very, very boring, you know, very, very boring. So that is a huge weakness that I still have. And I feel still feel like, like we all are, we're sold hope. I remember I was sitting there in Ikea with Jordan and we had, we had gone through the showroom. We were sitting down having our meatballs, right? 
and I was looking out. It was a gorgeous view of Ballymun, and it is actually a nice view. And I took a breath in, and I was like, see this right now. Like, this is this is life right now. And he was like, oh, I'm trying to see my meatballs here. But I was like, this is, we have everything to live for here, right? We haven't picked up the bits that we know are going to be too expensive, and it's going to be like 200 quid more than we ever dreamed of spending, right? We haven't put anything in the trolley. We haven't tried to manhandle a rug and a big long rail that's, you know, blinds and trying to somehow fit that when you actually go into the bit where you put the stuff in your trolley, you know? But right now, we have seen the showroom. We kind of know the bits that we want, and everything in our heads looks as good as the showroom. It could be. The potential is here, you know? Um, I love living in that moment, that hopeful moment where you feel like this one product from Ikea is going to fix everything. So that's my biggest weakness, is believing that one thing can fix things. My biggest, number three, what's your biggest strength? My biggest strength is... Uh, I feel like I'm very good at coming up with top line ideas for things, you know, like, you know, we need five bits to fill a show. I feel like I'm be good at doing that and then spacing out. All right, that'll be the first part, second part, third part. You know, I feel like I'm good at that. The actual follow through, the actual follow through of actually sitting down writing the thing. I feel like I can come very good ideas for movies, very good ideas for shows, very good ideas for video games. Top line, top line ideas um, and as I get older I realize that I need to just collaborate more with people and help me make those top lines whole lines number four what's the biggest learning experience you've had I mean I've bombed I told you about the laughter lounge gigs at our, <laughs> I'll go back I'm gonna go back and fucking win that room over um, where I went out and just said some just incredibly like self-indulgent like going out on stage and talking about stuff that only you find funny you know and, you know, rather than welcoming people in through the window of you, just you're kind of more so just like bashing people over the head in a kind of very kind of abrasive kind of way. That would be a kind of stand up one. It's just realizing how do I communicate this better to people who would understand it? How can I make this more relatable so that me talking about MSN Messenger and cybering people in the year 2000 would be relatable? And if it doesn't, then maybe that's just one that I, you know, Maybe that's a character detail of a character in a screenplay that is used instead of me saying it in front of a stag party, right? But I would say a huge learning experience I had was in um, was in college, like seeing uh, seeing other people in college, my friends, just decide, you know, oh, actually, I don't like this degree, so I'm going to do something else. And like being like, whoa, is that not really disruptive? You know, is that not really disrupting and completely changing what you the kind of plan you had for yourself? I really think that there's uh, there's gold in them hills after the kind of discomfort of either changing a college degree that you don't like, changing a job that you don't like, changing a relationship that you don't like. And, you know, now I get a big buzz off seeing people uh, do things, when even especially when they're hard, to put their... This isn't fucking funny. <laughs> this isn't funny. No, people, people put their happiness first. You know, I like that. Don't going to be some funny ones here in a second. Gary's getting in here. Gary's after fucking creeping in the window here because it's a new room and he knows that I'm vulnerable. Um, so that's a big learning experience. Not one that I had because I did the same degree for four years and I didn't like it. But seeing other people do it or take just a bit of a harder road to eventually get where they want, just being disruptive, just being like, need to radically change this. I know it's going to shake things up for a little bit, but the end goal is much better. What's your idea of a perfect day? Number five. My perfect day is having three dinners having three dinners I did it with my mate Aki one time we went on a date we only did, we had two dinners and a dessert in a different place we went and we had tacos full meal of tacos and then we went to an Italian had a full meal of pasta I remember texting him one day being like you know you're a foodie you know Aki owns and runs a note note wine bar so he's, you know he's an, he's an epicurious fellow he's by epicurious and I was like do you want to go for two dinners and he's like absolutely and he listed off these places we went immediately. So that'd be a great day. But to keep it a bit light in case you do want to make love, me and Aki were not going to make love that night. Um, Not after the fucking carbs we had. But to do it a bit lighter, you know, and maybe just go for... Me and Terry have had amazing dates where we've just gone and, like, been in Bordeaux or, like, you know, San Sebastian. And we've just gone from, like, one spot to another spot, ordering just something small. And even though you have every bit of urge to eat a huge amount of things, like they do in Bake Off, you're like, I could, I could eat the whole fucking thing. 
I hate the whole fucking thing, you know. I wish I could eat the whole fucking thing, you prawn. Prune you know. Uh, I need to bring the Bake Off podcast back. Anyway, you you know, you had the urge to do that, but just go and have a little crostini with a bit of prawn on top, babe. You know? Hey, babe, we'll have a little crostini with a bit of prawn on top. One glass of white wine. And do that like nine times. That's my ideal date, you know? And... You know, you kind of even want three of the nine things to be shite so you can, like, slag them off, you know? I love complaining about food. I have great dates with my wife because if we go we go to a restaurant and it's good, we love it, we talk about it, and if it's bad, we just rip it to fucking pieces and tell them everything they should do better. That's why we're really good. We're very good master chef, the professionals, viewers. Number six, what's one vice you wish you could give up? Uh, look, I'm back on the vape. I'm not going to lie. Look. When I find myself in times of trouble, Lost Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, smoke a vape, you know? So uh, I'm, I, I'm, I, I've, I have enough physical media. I couldn't buy any more physical media, right? I ended up buying five Blu-rays in the time that I was off the vape. And then I was like, I haven't watched any of these yet. Watch Kubrick, though, the 2001 in 4K. Fucking unbelievable. And it looks beautiful. So I have five DVDs, uh, Blu-rays there that I haven't watched yet. So maybe I just need to find something else. I can spend spend that now nine euro to cheek at some fucking people. Let me tell you this. In pound world or euro dollar land, you know, those pound shops, you can buy uh, the euro. What's the euro saver spot that's beside the George? They sell Lost Mary's in there for six quid. So I know that you can sell them for six quid. You agree, nine quid. Tesco as well sell them for nine quid. So I wish I could give that up. But I like it too much at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. I'm happy with it at the moment, which is the dangerous. That's an insidious place to be, the fucking vape. Sitting there, vaping, watching the TV. Absolute bliss that I wish I could um, get rid of. Seven, I'll talk about this very briefly. What's a cause that's important to you? Uh, I'll very briefly say I love supporting Mer- Merchants Key Ireland, homeless and addiction uh, um, people. They help people with ho- ho- who are homeless and uh, add- addiction services. Uh, I've, I've been I've been supporting Bardstown recently after I listened to Rob Delaney's book, uh, A Heart That Works About His Terminally Ill uh, Son, and then I was like, eh, "It's just kids." I listened to that book and I was fucking bawling my eyes crying. I'll tell you a sad detail from the book, but feel free to skip ahead 30 seconds if you don't like that. You're just here for a laugh. You don't want to hear that shit. Feel free. Hey, uh, you know, but so skip ahead 30 seconds from now if you don't want to hear this. Rob Delaney saying that he has, when his son Henry was in Great Ormond Street, terminally ill, brain tumor, uh, that there was just a woman who brought her dog into the ward and the kids just lost it. They were just so happy. They, they just couldn't believe their luck that there was a fucking dog in and he said he'd never seen his son so happy just to see a dog. And that just absolutely broke my heart. And I started giving to Bardstown after that. Uh, so that's, I think they're great what they do. They do like summer camps and they just do fun days for, for, for sick kids. Uh, moving on. Hey, what's funny? Hey, what's the best compliment? Number eight. What's the best compliment uh, you ever received? I said it before. Say it again. Uh, my mate Charlie said, you are the most literal dancer I've ever seen in my entire life. And just moments after that, Jordan said, I was like, are you slagging me? Because he was dancing like me. And he goes, no, I'm trying to dance like you. <laughs> I'm an incredible dancer. Terry's done ballet and all this shit. She knows how to say, if you, any wedding you're at, Terry be up there showing the man's how to salsa every single time, right? She's good at all that shit. But the actual instinct, she says I'm all hips, but is that not what it is? Is that not all it is? How many times, uh, we watched, you know, um, Dancing with the Stars, you know, good pal Kevin was on there. And um, sometimes they they get critiques being like, I need more hips. And I'm like, I'd be all hips. I'd be all hips. I'd be cancelled for the fucking hips that I'd be given. Uh, that's why I'll never do it, actually. Not that anyone's ever asked me. When are you the most inspired? I'm the most inspired when I see funny things and I don't, I just I've never seen that before, you know? Like Limmy or Tim and Eric or Conor O'Malley now. I think you should leave that show. Uh, when I see things like that, I'm like, I would have never come to that, you know. Or when something is just drawn out after the joke has already landed. Uh, that's when I'm inspired. Although at the moment, I've been very inspired. Whenever I find a new bit of tech that I can get my teeth into, and it, it you know, it's boom and bust. I get so excited about it. I put everything into. Oh, I'm going to do everything in this kind of tech, you know, whether it's Photoshop or whether it's, um, you know 
like I have this AI found this found this thing right I'll, I'll play a clip for you here <laughs> I uh, I found this AI voice cloning tool that if you upload just 30 seconds of a of a celebrity's voice or anyone's voice it can clone it and you can have them say whatever you want so I did one of um, of Pat Kenny um, recommending that we should eat cats just to send my mates and um, and it sounds exactly uh, listen to this right listen to this now Christmas is on the way and, and we're all familiar with a Christmas turkey even a Christmas chicken but what about uh, a Christmas cat in a bid to reduce food waste the DSPCA have launched a new campaign <laughs> does not sound exactly like Pat Kenny and you might say that on news talk I couldn't believe it I'm going to be fucking lethal with this thing or not this is the thing so whenever I find something like that uh, I get the most inspired like face changing app I was doing that for a while that's how I started with Instagram I was just putting my face on things filters that was hugely inspiring whenever I see a new bit of tech and I'm like oh you know you know the thing is, sneeze is one eighth of an orgasm I think it's when you find a new app um, number 10 sweet or savoury I'm a savoury guy through and through I would much rather I would much rather we have starters mains and starters again I would just rather you know and I've said this before and I'll say it again you know I would love to see go don't mind your your sexy sauces and your chocolates and all that stuff give me gravy and curry any day in the bedroom right I wouldn't be interested in drinking a load of uh, chocolate off a woman or my wife um, you know wouldn't be into that at all uh, so I would much rather kind of a gravy I wouldn't mind you know kissing a bit of gravy off my wife I suppose <laughs> um, you know so I know you weren't asking about sex but generally uh, 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 savoury would be much better I'd much rather crisp over a chocolate although you know I'm always happy to, ha happy to have a bit of chocolate around uh, 11 what did you want to be when you were what did you want to do with your life what are you going to do with your life man you're sitting here eating uh, eating Nestle Kvargs, man. You're doing nothing but sitting there eating the goddamn raspberry Kvarg, man. I don't care how much protein it has in it, man. <laughs> we had a couple of Kvargs last night. We're trying to be better. We were watching Bake Off, so Terry uh, cracked out two protein Kvargs, um, which is a high-protein kind of, yo I don't know, yogurt or something. It has a, there's a Swedish flag on it, so. We were just cracking into our Kvargs, and, um, and then... Sven fell in a fjord. Um, what did you want to do in your life at age 12? Uh, I actually think at 12, I was probably getting into Kevin Smith movies. Um, I wanted to be a director. I think I really wanted to be a comedian and I wanted to be front and center an actor. And then my dad just very, was like, oh, well, you know, in a kind of a, hey, great. Let's get you motivated about that. Oh, you know, you're acting, you know, com being a comedian is a lot of work. You know, do you think you're up for it? I'm like, no, forget it. He's like, oh, no, no, maybe it's not. No, forget it. Forget it. Hard work? No, thank you. So then director just seemed like, oh, I could sit in my own room and be a writer-director, sit and write screenplays. I think when I was like 12 or 13, I wrote a screenplay. Um, well, half a screenplay about lads who are queuing up. Would have been... Yeah, it would have been. It was based... It would have been 2000, so 12 or 13. It was based on lads who are queuing up to watch The Phantom Menace. And they're like they're in the line. The whole movie takes place. It was kind of like Clerks, but they all take place in the queue for Star Wars Episode One. People who had like slept there, camped out for a week to get tickets. That doesn't happen anymore because online ticket sales. Uh, so I wanted to be a director. Uh, is the answer to that? Uh, eleven. Oh, I have eleven here twice. Okay. Um, I'll say eleven again because that'll mess me up if I do. All right. What song can you listen to on repeat? I always get a hyperfixation with a song. At the moment now, it's Cornelia Jacobs' "Hold Me Closer," which was a I thought it was going to be Eurovision winner for Sweden. Right? They just come up with the biggest bangers. Not only did they have the Svargs, man, they also got the fucking Bops, right? Uh, and that's that one. Hold me closer and don't you leave before the sunrise. I'll be bleeding, but don't you mind. I'll be fine. Incredible song. And uh, I, at the moment, that's just what I'm locked into that I can listen to. Sometimes it, you know, might have been sexual by naked. You know, just say you feel the way that I feel. I feel sexual. Sexual healing be one. Aha, take on me is one sometimes. The sun always shines on TV by Aha, I listen to repeatedly. Uh, 
Bizarre Bizarre Love Triangle by New Order. I'm listen I listen to constantly. Uh, I have a lot of songs that I listen to a lot. So um number twelve. Um what makes you smile the most? <laughs> My kids. Bleed, 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 bleed. Um I just they pull faces and they make me smile a lot. Uh what's one thing people don't know about you? <laughs> Come on. Come on. I've told you everything. I've told you everything. What else do you fucking want? This watch. This shirt. Right? Where is the diamond? Where is the diamond? Do you see a diamond here? Shouldn't have done the voice. Um one thing people don't know about me. Uh fucking uh I have two pairs of shoes that are half a size too small. But I like the look of them. These are one of them. Oh, here's one for you. See these new balance? They're fake. I don't know if you can see. And I don't even like them. And I didn't even like them to begin with. Do you know what I did? This is a little despicable little pervert that I am. I saw these new balance. I don't even know what they are. What are they? New balance five fifties, right? I think they're a basketball shoe. Don't like basketball, right? Um saw them. They looked expensive. They looked popular, right? <laughs> And so uh, then I was on uh, DH Gate, which is like AliExpress, and I saw them, and they looked like knockoffs. And I was like, I'm gonna give them a shot. They were still like fifty quid, but apparently they're like 120 quid. And I was like, I'll give it a shot. And they're too small, and I don't like the look of them. But I'm so t- I am human, and I need to be loved. You know, that's why I do these things. Um, interesting. Number fourteen: heels, frets, heels, flats, or sneakers. I'd love to get into heels. But when you're a man, uh, having a clip-cloppy shoe is very ominous, you know? Uh, not that I want to sneak up on anyone, but you know what I mean? I just feel like when you're walking behind someone, you hear clip-clop, clip-clop, you know? I already have a jacket there, Terry got me, that looks like a streaker jacket. And I got two looks from people being like, today, just walking around the jacket. I'm giving off big jacket energy with this jacket. Everyone talks about the jacket. And I think it's how my posture when I wear it. I'm like, Maybe I'm swirling like this a bit much. You know, with my jacket, I'm like moving from side to side. <laughs> Do you like my jacket? Do you like my jacket? I'm definitely giving off look at my jacket energy when I wear that jacket. Um, so heels, flats, or sneakers. It'll be sneakers for sneaking. Uh, up on, no no one's sneaking up on anyone, but I definitely don't like a shoe that has, I'd like to wear heels maybe once. I used to wear my Maz heels sometimes to walk around with them, wear a bra as well. See, you already knew that. That's the thing. What else could you possibly know? You already knew that. I've already told you that before. Multiple times, probably. Uh, number 15, vintage or new? Probably new, but just because I've gone to so many fucking kilo sales and I just don't know how to find the good stuff, I know when I have a good vintage piece, you know, like Shane has, has always got like good vintage pieces and stuff. He even lent me a jacket. I, I, I borrowed a denim shirt and he texted me very quick about it to get it back to him. He's like, oh, that's actually a Marlboro shirt. Can you get it back to me very as soon as you can, you know? I'm like, all right, chill the fuck out, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, I like when I can get a good vintage piece, but just new, to be honest. I'm a, I'm a fucking fiend for it. Now, I do give old clothes to the charity shop all the time, and I'm trying to do my part there, um, but my part would probably be not buying new all the time, but I love buying, like, a new... I love When I go to Uniqlo, I, like, up, update my wardrobe quite a lot, which isn't, you know, not, not great, not great. What are the three things you can't live without? I'm going to go gadgets here, right? I don't have a lot of tech. I don't have a lot of tech, despite how much I might talk about it and all this stuff. Like I've got an old MacBook. Um, I built my own computer that just has like off the you know off the shelf kind of RAM and all that kind of stuff. I do like it. Um, but the three things I can't live without, you know, I mean, I I love my phone. I love I love iPhones. I love it. It's great. It has everything you ever need. Now, it also is a portal to hell and your m- worst insecurities. But I made all these little AI things on my phone. I make videos. I can record podcasts. I love I love having a fucking phone. I love it. I think it's great. Don't act like this isn't the everything machine, you know? Today, I was walking in. Uh, I was on the Lewis, and I started reading old X-Men comics panel by panel on my fucking phone, bro. You messing? While listening to music on my Bose headphones. I love my Bose headphones. I have some Bose quiet comfort bit of an older style now a headphone the microphone doesn't work but have been very reliable i bought them for myself when i was in sales and we had like a my first ever bonus in sales i bought a pair of headphones 
and I love them and I think they sound great and I adore them and the other thing would be my PlayStation my PlayStation 5 and I know you know I got a free PlayStation 5 when the PlayStation 5 came out and it is uh, it is the greatest moment of my life I'm not even going to say after the birth or whatever or when I met or when I married it was the greatest moment of my life and I hope they won't mind me saying that right I love my wife and they're longer they're in the long run you know that's a longer thing <laughs> Me getting a free PlayStation 5 with the greatest respect to my family, my kids, the greatest moment of my life when I got a free PlayStation 5, okay? I, you know, I can't even put it into words. And I feel that every time I boot it up, every time I turn it on, every time I pick up the controller, every time I feel a bit of haptic feedback in the dual sense, every time it turns on and it leaves me exactly where I was left off in Spider-Man 2, you know? Every time I have to mess with the settings, even if I have to just change it, from the internet goes off and I get to log in. Uh, every detail of it. I love it. I love going into the PlayStation store, having a little browse. Might not buy anything. I might, you know. I love jumping over to different games. I love jumping into my hard drive and looking at my PlayStation 4 games that are still there. Cloud saving, remote playing. I love it. <laughs> so those would be my three things. My phone, which come on. I hate my phone. I hate my phone. I hate my phone. Okay. Okay. I fucking love my phone and I love looking at it all the time. And like, you're not going to curse chocolate if you're, if you, you know, comfort eat. Do you know what I mean? Don't curse. I hate chicken. I hate chicken balls. I hate, I hate Olympus Monzas of Chinese. I hate spice bags. No, bro, just eat one less spice bag. Do one less hour with your phone. Love it. Uh, but I'm terrified of what it means for my kids. Um, number 17, window or aisle seat? Oh, my God, i got so many of these to go through. This is 73. I can't, i got to steamroll through these. Okay. Uh, window or aisle seat? I would have to go with window. I like being nice, contained in my little spot. I don't like getting up. I don't like gravity. I don't like having to get up for someone else to move out of the way. I like to just I'm locked in here. I couldn't give a fuck about looking out there. Nothing to do with that. If anything, i just put the thing down, put my head on it. You know, I can also sleep in a very crunched up position. Just give me something else. It would always be window all the time. These days, doesn't matter what I'm fucking told. I'll sit where I'm fucking told now these days. Young fella will be trying to fucking... You can't put the young fella in the aisle anymore because he'd want to run up to the cockpit with a fucking box cutter or whatever known him, you know? So you have to just... He has to go in the middle and then I'm in the aisle and then I'm still getting up and all this shit, you know? Anyway, um, number 18. What's your current TV character obsession? Uh, I'm not really enjoying any TV at the moment. I couldn't. I watched two episodes of Loki. Couldn't really give an f. Um, I suppose the greatest TV character I've seen in recent memory is Idris Elba in Hijack, Apple TV's Hijack. He's some like corporate negotiator who's like also like amazing at talking with terrorists. Well, probably the best show I've seen in the year. Not like an amazing show. Succession was also this year. To be fair, that would be it. But you know, Hijack is just like yeah. Just give me a good fucking thriller. Just give us a thriller. All right. And then it, it gets into it and you're like, oh, my God, there might be bigger things at play. Oh, my God, they might be alluding to things that might not, you might not, you know, see what happens until season two or three. They don't. Right. It's all self-contained, gorgeous, limited series. And um, Idris Elba in Hijack would be up there. Uh, number 19, leather or lace? Uh, leather. Le -le -le leather. My mate Joe went to a Turkish leather factory one time uh, on his own for some reason, right? And he came back with a leather hat. And I really regret that I still don't have it. It was a leather cap. And I wore it. And people be like, what the fuck? You know? It was exactly that kind of fashion that I love where it's like, this feels weird, but I love it. Number 20, what's the most adventurous thing you've done in your life? Went, I uh, got scuba diving, trained, I suppose, maybe that. I learned I'm a paddy licensed Paddy licensed. Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, and Paddy licensed man. We're all scuba diving. Guess who survived? Me, the Paddy licensed man. Um, and this is where we went. We went to this is when we were in the Salinda Resort and Spa in Fukuoka, Vietnam. We were staying in the stunning Salinda Resort and Spa. This was after our honeymoon. This was like the big spend. Went to the Salinda Resort and Spa. Only went to Fukuoka, this island to go to the Salinda Resort and Spa, one of the cheaper five-star spas because it was on an island uh, in Vietnam. And then Terry was like, okay, now that we're here, we need to do something. Like, nope. They're literally giving you champagne when you cough here, right? So no way we're having like 
big fucking open incredible buffet and she's like no we gotta do something over here so we spent three days three full days not in the resort right only spending the mornings and the evenings there three days learning how to scuba dive in the in the uh, pool of an apartment complex right because this guy was all like oh here learn how to scuba dive and here's my and all the scuba diving instructors lived in this complex and it was a tiny pool that wasn't even five foot deep and we learned to scuba dive in that pool we were in there for two days and then we had one day actually out in at sea which was great saw some cool fish you know uh, it's very exciting I like scuba diving I like being underwater like that I like snorkeling um, but we with the amount of time that we wasted not drinking champagne at the Cylinder Resort and Spa. I'll never forgive my wife for. But that is the compromise that you get into. And I hope she appreciates that. I hope she appreciates the sacrifice that I made. And now, to be fair, I'm a Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, Paddy licensed, Paddy scuba diver now. How would you define yourself in three words? Nope. Um, I mean, what? Like, what am I going to say? Big swinging, you know, or anything sincere. Nah, that doesn't interest me. Moving on. Um, what's your current favorite piece of clothing that you own? I like these Uniqlo khaki trousers. As you might have noticed, I'm wearing a lot of khaki trousers at the moment. I like these trousers. I like the fact that I don't have to button them, that they are elastic. I have not worn anything with a button since COVID started. Um, my jeans were gaslighting me for a little while, having me believe that I'm no longer a 32 waist. I'm not having it anymore. It's elastic all the way. What's a must-have clothing item everyone should own? I would say this. Or actually my current piece of no, the must-have item is these khaki pants, Uniqlo. All right, I think I recommended them somewhere, right? I love them. They're really comfy. Now, these ones are technically the ones they sell with the same serial number, but these are not the same ones that I used to have. The other ones are a bit more cotton, a bit thicker. I think they've tried to sell more for a bit cheaper. These are ones that I got recently trying to get the same ones, but they were, they're not the same ones. Boring. What a boring thing to say. But my must-have item that I have is a range jacket that Terry got me, which is so warm that I can just walk around with this rockin' fucking Barry Carolyn um, tattoo shirt that he gave me, which I really like. Actually, I'm a huge fan of this, and I have a bit of Lee Brown tattoo merch as well. The two boys over in Lucky Penny uh, tattooing. Uh, I have their merch, and I like wearing their merch. Uh, but my, my Reigns jacket, Terry got me a Reigns jacket, and it's waterproof. And it's the sort of jacket you just throw. You could walk out at 4 o'clock in the morning when it's, you know, pissing down. And all you'd have is be a slapped cold face. You know what I mean? Be nice and warm. Only wearing a t-shirt underneath. So I like that. Number 24. What's inspiring you in life right now? Um, In terms of like work, I'm just incredibly inspired by e uh, AI capabilities. As someone who is a top line idea guy, and this is not to say that I want someone to like write a script. I would never have AI write a script or anything like that. But I use AI every single day to like ask advice as well. Like it does weigh up the pros and cons of these two things. You know, does this deal sound good? You know, uh, what would the steps in setting up something like this look like? And when I see them all out there and you can just put, you know, it's just about getting a, the skeleton framework is the hardest thing that I, that, that my brain struggles to do. So having AI skeleton something out and I can just put my whole flavor on top of that is, and my type of comedy over something like that. And again, I'm not talking about actually getting, you know, a, like I would never like have a screenplay and then rewrite lines or anything like that. I would never have a beat made by AI or anything like that unless that was part of a sketch for something. Do you know what I mean? So to get the skeleton or have just expert advice at your disposal and to use it as a kind of collaborative thing, to be honest, I'm just a, a bit intimidated, mostly inspired, a little scared. But uh, at the moment, that's probably the thing that's inspired. It's probably the thing I fucking talk about most on this podcast, but just some of the AI technology that you can have. When it comes to work, I don't, you know, but I also think for productivity and organization, I'd be very excited to see how that looks in the next six months. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? My dad told me one time, you think he was actually trying to give me advice. And I was like, nah, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, that's not going to work because he goes, you know what? When people try and give you advice, just take it. And then you can choose later if you want to use it or not. And I was like, oh, all right. That sounds like a life hack. I'm into that now, you know. Uh, and I've used that. I do that. I always let people tell me things. I never... Because then you're just ending the conversation and that piece of advice might not be something that you want, but you might get a conversation going that the third or fourth piece of advice might click. I'm sure you've been in a situation like that. You're having a conversation with someone back and forth and then you're like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, I could try that, yeah. Or I could try that. Or, oh, that's the one. It's like the fourth or fifth one. But if you kind of be like, no, that's not going to work because then you'll never get to the actual fourth or fifth one. Um, Number 26, what's your pet peeve? I don't like people doing the whole uh, to the annoying person on the bus this morning. Thanks very much for eating sprouts. You know, hey, love, 
He's not going to read that, hon. He's not going to read that. Babe, he's not going to read that. Okay. Uh, to the guy who scratched my car today. I know it's hard to say sometimes. I got my car scratched today and I'm sad. I know it's hard to say that. And you have to fabricate direct conversation, you know. Did I do that recently with my bike stolen? To the two lads who stole my bike? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Because that's a pet peeve of mine. Diamonds are pearls. Pearls? I'd like to start wearing pearls. What is something you notice about someone when you first meet them? I look at people's shoes a lot. Uh, I don't mean to. I think it's because I'm self-conscious about my shoes because I'm always very self-conscious as to whether of how much of my sock is showing. I got a weird shit there, right? Cuff to shoe ratio. I'm talking about it all the time. And I notice that someone's got a very good cuff to shoe ratio. You know, um, but I look at people's shoes. Remember, that was a quote in Shawshank Redemption. You know, whoever looks at another man's shoes. Yeah, I do all the time. So I would have been the first fucker to clock Andy Dufresne walking out there with a pair of brogues on. Um, like I don't judge people for their shoes. I always, uh, I kind of, if I see they're wearing like a scruffy pair of shoes, I'm probably thinking like, oh, it's like a cool little aesthetic they're going for. Like I'm not really judging anyone because I got dirty shoes and I got clean shoes. You know, um. I have dirty shoes and I have clean shoes. <laughs> Number one fucking podcast in the fucking world right here. What's your biggest regret? I didn't go to the right college. I like IADT. I like the people there. I think it's great. And if you want to make films, great. Good for you. I wanted to make films, but I was studying fucking arts council fucking funding and waste my time for four years with great respect to uh, business studies and arts management. Um, business and arts management and all the DL242 alum. Love you all. You're great people. But uh, I didn't live anywhere near there. And it took me fucking two hours to get there and two hours back and for someone who couldn't even muster up the fucking gumption to walk up Griffith Avenue to where my school was in 20 minutes and I was late constantly then what what made me think I could just travel this aspirational fucking bullshit oh yeah I'm sure when I need to I'll travel four hours a day (laughs) yeah not gonna happen so I regret that Um, number 30 what is heavily played on your music playlist right now uh, heavily played at the moment I'm listening to a lot of uh, The Beatles Because I was really enjoying Now and Then Their last track uh, Which I thought was good Of their posthumous releases I would say Real Love I think is the best one Although I do think John Lennon's version of Real Love The demo version on piano Might be my favourite John Lennon song ever um, But uh, But yeah I, I'm listening to The Beatles again I'm really enjoying listening to Now and Then Because the lyrics sound like placeholder lyrics For like what a sadder song that wasn't written, you know? Like the kind of positive lyrics sound kind of almost poppy against such a kind of somber tone. And I like that. I love seeing that and get back where they have this kind of place so where Paul's like, you just put some lyrics in and then hopefully, you know, you figure it out later. John actually says that. Well, you know, you just put some lyrics in and then you bang. Not very good. At, not so good at doing John. Um, you just put placeholder lyrics or telling John when he's writing something. Um, and then eventually comes up with these incredible lyrics. You know, you put in the placeholder lyrics just to get to where you're going. Like when... Um, Paul wrote yesterday and he was like, you know, ham and eggs, how I really love my ham and eggs instead of yesterday. My trouble seems so far away. So I like listening to now and then and I like thinking about how if he had finished the song. One of my greatest thought, one of my, you know, when I'd like to stare off into space and think about the Beatles is I like to think about if John Lennon was alive, what his kind of like 80s um, electronic phase would have sounded like. I'd say it would have been remarkable. I'd say you might even have seen him known more of a kind of Trent Reznor. I think if he could get stuck into that, if he would have loved Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails, and I think he would have loved that kind of primal kind of like industrial sound uh, or at least tinkered with it for a little while. And it's one of the greatest lost albums is John Lennon's never written and never recorded and never even inspired uh, metally kind of electronic album. Um, What's your favorite board game? Um, me and Terry are absolutely fucking lethal at Cranium. Uh, we're very good. Uh, we don't get to pair up a lot, but we're very good at it. My favorite board game, I love playing Risk. Uh, I just love having a long game. I love, we're all, me and my mates are very pally, you know. We never really like slag each other too much in real life. We never go hard. We don't really disagree very much. We slag each other. We don't really disagree that much. But Risk is where all the fucking scars, you know, are, are revealed, you know, the, the scar tissue reveals itself again of times we were slighted over the years, you know. Someone's trying to set up a little base in Australia and we're like, are we just gang up on them, you know. 
deals that are just broken immediately. It's a joy. One of the best board game experiences I've ever had, though, was playing the Big Brother board game with my mates. And uh, it's really it's really harrowing stuff, right? Because you actually have to be it will stuff, say stuff like, you know, who's the sloppiest? You just have to fucking write down a name, put it in the thing. You know, who'd be the last person to clean up dinner? Or who if you who wouldn't pay you back, uh, you know, if you lent them money? Just put names in, you know? And then my mate Jess got voted out on the fir- first one. It wasn't because she was sloppy around like that. I don't even know what the questions were. She got voted out on the first time. She was absolutely distraught. And then to save yourself from elimination, you have to, they have to, it's nice questions. They're like, all right, who are these people who would pick you up from an airport? Saved. You know what I mean? And then you count them all at the end. So uh, it's all anonymous. It takes ages counting all the tokens because you have a number associated with yourself that you have to vote for and then you have to get them back all secretively. It's a very cumbersome game, but I've never seen a raw, more raw, like, let's fucking go for it here kind of game. Um, what's your guilty pleasure? I don't really believe in guilty pleasures, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I like cool things. I like uncool things. Uh, I suppose I'll take that as what weird shit. I? I love to watch the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. I love this guy called Luke. He's a Christian. He's Mormon. He goes out camping with his kids. You might have seen some of his more viral videos. Like he dug like a snow shelter and just digs. So that's my guilty pleasure, I suppose, is I like watching this man with his with his boys going out and camping and making food over the fire and kind of camping in harrowing conditions. Sometimes just lying out in the in a blizzard in a sleeping bag, um, and I really enjoy that. Uh, what? book did you most recently finish uh, Nitro by Guy Evans was given to me by my good pal Zach Golden uh, which is a book about the kind of rise and fall of WCW uh, you know the Monday, Monday Night Wars really in depth book a lot of interviews with a lot of people uh, that's I think my favourite type of book because at the moment I'm reading MCU uh, The Reign of Marvel Studios by Joanna Robinson and that's tells of the rise and then how COVID happened and then what the current state of, I actually want to do a kind of current state of Disney and Marvel uh, podcast. Actually, I want to do a podcast on how the X Men are going to specifically the X Men save the MCU and how they should launch the XCU. That's an upcoming podcast. Um, <clears throat> what are you currently reading, MCU? How do you start your day? I start my day with my son's fingers in my mouth, usually, or up my nose or in my eyes, and his uh, feet mashed into my testicles because I sleep in the bed with him. Because Terry sleeps in the bed with the youngest, right, with the with the baby. Then when she's bigger, we'll put her in a bed. But at the moment, this has just been working out for us. He's got a massive double bed, sleeps on the floor. It's great. You know, I go in there. But sometime in the middle of the night, his feet must get cold or something like that and try and find some warmth. And they bury themselves under my scrotum. And um, so that's how I, I, I wake up every morning and um, start my day by taking feet off my bollocks and taking hands out of my fucking mouth. That's how I start my day. Um I haven't been good for the routine. I think I've been getting to bed earlier recently and I've felt much better, but I think I need to get to bed earlier and wake up before. If I could wake up, this is what I think. This is my biggest weakness, thinking this is the one thing that's going to solve my problem. But I feel like if I could wake up before my kids, then that would significantly improve how I start my day. At the moment, I wake up. I'm not fully dressed. I don't brush my teeth yet. Make them breakfast. I tidy their breakfast. Get them dressed. Terry or me bring them out to crash, bring the uncle out to crash, come back, and then Terry, because she's still on maternity leave, will take the other one. Uh, and so, really, I, I could be up at like half six or seven, but I haven't actually done anything to start my day, whether it's get dressed, shower, brush my teeth, or anything like that, until after they've left. And I don't want to do that. I think I would like to have my ducks in a row before I wake up, and then I could be totally present. Because then I'm f- fairy, you know, fairying, <laughs> faffing about for a little while. So that's how I start. Uh, what's your favorite holiday? I went to Japan one time. Me and Terry went to Japan for like three weeks. Uh, and it was amazing. I loved it. Love all the food. Loved traveling. Love Japanese culture. I love, uh, you know, love it all. Love going to fucking arcades. Looking at samurai, uh, you know, samurai garb armor, you know. Going to the, you know, the, the Edo Museum. Learning all about that shit. Or even just going somewhere and just going to like a Seven Eleven and getting a hot bit of chicken. I love Japan and I'd love to go back. Um, if you could raid one woman's closet, who would it be? Um, I would raid Grace Jones. <laughs> Don't know why. If you could switch lives with one person for a day, who would it be? Uh, if I could switch lives with one person for the day, probably Donald Trump. Uh, just to see what I could say around my 
you know my entourage and what ha- and how they'd agree with me you know and to see how much of a prick I could be uh, and how much they would tolerate you know um, I think that would be or also just to see what it's like from the other side I'd actually like to switch lives with a white supremacist just to understand <laughs> no um, switch lives are actually like if I actually got to enjoy the life uh Maybe like a pilot who's like having an affair. <laughs> you know, maybe like some uh, some Etihad deluxe pilot who's having an affair. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, whatever. I'm right, moving on. Um, maybe like Chris Angel. Um, like I'd love to just be Chris Angel, really good at magic, be a mind freak, and like just live in Las Vegas and just go to like, I mean, I'd probably he'd probably come back and be like, "You've after fucking caning on weight. Why did you do this to me? I got I I got you one pound lighter, and you're after gaining fifteen pounds by going to the fucking Bellagio buffet here in Vegas. You clown. Why'd you do this to me?" And don't tell anyone what you know about my secrets. <laughs> you know, I would probably Chris Chris Angel, the mind freak. Uh, what's one thing you've always wanted to try but have been too scared to do? Magic publicly. Um, what's one thing that you wish you knew at age nineteen? I mean, fucking loads. Do you know what I mean? Prioritize your happiness. I've talked about it already. You know, uh, disrupt things that you think you're on a path to do that you don't want to do. Uh, you know, uh, no one thing is going to fix all your problems. Uh, consistency. Uh, 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 hope is living. Um, you know. Anyway, moving on. Besides your phone or wallet, what's a couple of must-have purse items? I don't really have that in my vape. At the moment, which I would like to get rid of. What's something you can't do? Quit my vape. What is the best vacation you've ever taken? Probably my honeymoon. No, probably Japan, to be honest. Probably Japan. It was the only vacation that I've ever had where I, on like, I get fed up with like, I can't talk to anyone after like four days, three days, to be honest, if we're being two and a half days, if we're being fucking honest, to be honest. But no, I can somehow muster to three days. Um, and after, and I don't want to do anything. I want to look at my phone. I want to just sit in somewhere. I, want, I don't want any new stimulus. Um, stimuli uh, but Japan it was like up all the time out before Terry wanting just to move you know uh, and I don't know what I just loved it and it was very motivated to keep going you have to kind of give yourself a break though that's what's great about a holiday like that I wanted to eat everything I wanted to see everything love Japan um, what's one city you've always dreamed of traveling to I went to New York in 2001 I narrowly escaped 9-11 by six months okay Um and uh, I've never been there as an adult. I've never been to New York. I haven't been to New York since 2001. So I've never been as an adult. I've never been since I've, the internet was a thing. And I knew about food, blogs and stuff like that. Uh, you know, Broadway. You know, Brooklyn sandwiches. All that stuff. So I hope to do that sometime. Uh, what's something you always travel with? My headphones and I enjoy them. Uh, what else? Always a lot of plugs. Always travel with nothing mad, nothing mad. Your your basics, you know. Um, well, I'll tell you, you just don't get to tune out anymore when you travel. Do you know what I mean? Pop your headphones in, just zone out. Cause, cause you made two people. Um, favorite food. My favorite food is fried chicken. Favorite dessert. My favorite dessert is uh, a cheesecake. Usually, like a. Maybe something with a bit tar- something a bit tart, like a lemon cheesecake. My favorite snack is a toasty. Is that a snack? Is it a snack? I'm eating it outside of my you know, my meals. We have this Breville maker, right? I got it gifted again. Not as good as the PS5, but oh my god, I love it still, right? And I started doing something real dirty with it, right? I'm the fucking dirty, despicable being. I'm I'm covering both sides in light mayonnaise, but but like pretty much Two slices of bread. That's four sides of getting mayonnaise. All right? Four fucking sides. Ham. Two types of cheese. Usually both mature cheddar. Bish, bash, bosh. It is. It's everything. It's too good. I wish I didn't know it existed. At the moment, that's my favorite snack. Or two noodles. Two packs of noodles in one pot. 
Um, what's a movie that made you cry? Her is a movie, the most recent movie that made me cry. I know I cry all the time, but her, the ending of her when um, I think might have been on a come down to be honest, and I was watching it and I was just absolutely blubbering like a madman, and I loved it. It felt so cathartic and real and raw. Um, her, the ending of her, and it's not even like a sad ending or anything like that. I just thought it was really beautiful, really beautiful uh, kind of analogy of love and relationships and and breakup um what's your favorite movie of the last five years i mean might be the killer might be david fincher's the killer let's have a look at my letterbox here and i'll just have a look letterbox my letterbox one second talking with each other one second please my 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 films okay and i'm going to just specify years 2020s so that would be uh, the best I mean look there are better movies than this you know Parasite is the last five years uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is in there I really enjoyed Uncut Gems and Rocket Man I enjoyed I think these are all very obvious films here uh, I enjoyed that documentary Summer of Soul which is incredible uh, loved the special Inside Bo Burnham Worst Person in the World. That was an incredible film. Uh, enjoyed Dune quite a lot. Licorice Pizza was great. Get Back as a fucking flick kind of thing. It's not a flick really, I suppose. Uh, it's a TV show. Turning Red, I think the best Pixar movie. One of the best Pixar movies ever and that came in the last five years. Uh, Avatar 2 maybe. Not really though. I still haven't gotten back to it. Uh, the Killer, fucking incredible. But Barbarian, best horror film I've probably seen in the last five years. But I would have to say that Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame in the cinema. So many moments. On your left. What? They're back. Uh, Cap picking up Thor's hammer and just screaming giddy with excitement. The ending. It was just fan service done well, making it a, a genius move to make it look like it was the plan all along when it wasn't. It was just a series of very fortunate events that all lined up I am Iron Man you know fucking incredible best movie theatre experience of my lifetime and I've seen all the Star Wars I've seen well six of them in cinemas you know uh, I mean obviously they're not you know I've seen I've seen Jurassic Park in the cinema I've seen Jurassic Park in the cinema okay so, uh, yeah, I'd say Avengers Endgame. Okay, I'm going to go through. I've been talking here for a while. Um, what's one talent that you wish you had? Skateboarding. What is your favorite exercise? I love uh, deadlifting. What is your favorite band? Uh, the Beatles. What is your fa- favorite fast food order? It would be fried chicken. I love it. What is something you don't want to be doing in 10 years? Something I don't want to be doing driving i think that driving will be solved i like driving but i think i should be able to have a few drinks and have a car drive me around we can we not figure that shit out right now if i can get pat kenny's voice to say whatever i want then surely you can have a car drive me home when i've had a couple of pints 57 cutest thing on planet earth my daughter is doing a very cute thing now where she just hugs all the time she hugs everyone she hugs the kids all the time and she smiles she's got a big grin i love that and uh, best thing that happened this year I feel like I'm bragging here. No, got a, we got a house. We finally got a house and it was like a 10 year long thing. I got sacked from two different jobs while we were thinking about looking for a house and I felt like I was constantly like setting my wife to be very, you know, very diligent, very hard work and saves a lot, works very hard. I felt like I was kind of kicking that shit down the road. So it was a great relief to just, as I'm sure a lot of you people would love to have the relief. So I don't mean to be kind of rubbing it in. I feel like you're putting a fucking target on your back even saying that you like that you moved into a house. You know what I mean? So, because I remember every time I saw someone who was like, oh, we finally moved in. Oh, we got the keys today. I'm like, why am I only reading in the caption, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you? You know, that's what it felt like. So I understand what that's like. So I'll move on. Uh, that's the best thing. Favorite cocktail? I make uh, uh, old fashions at home, but I'm whiskey sour probably my favorite, you know? Do I like having an old fashioned though? I like having a smooth old fashioned when it's done right. Mine still tastes very raw alcohol y. Um, and I do actually like making highballs, which is just a shitload of sparkling water and whiskey and a squeeze of lemon. I, I actually, I drink that probably the most. <coughs> um, what, what movie makes you laugh the hardest? 
I think 40 year old version is probably the greatest comedy for me I think I laugh so hard at it and then when you just think back at Steve Carell coming up with it as just a guy who's never touched a boob you know you grab a boob it's like a bag of sand it's just so fucking funny to me um what do you usually eat for dinner believe it or not it's going to sound mental we we actually we terry makes a lot of like lovely soupy brothy things that have like ramen noodles in them and then whatever kind of a protein meat and a load of veg she feeds me very well terry makes all the dinners and she feeds me very well there's always loads of veg a protein and it's always super light nothing very fried sometimes we might have that what do you usually eat for lunch i probably have a sandwich today i went to prep and i had a uh chicken bacon caesar roll roll um or for lunch at home terry might make some eggs uh and a bit of toast for lunch um and then for breakfast i would have either porridge or whatever cereal my uncle is having when i'm good and there's no judgment here but when i'm good i'd be having a smoothie with like two scoops of like porridge oats in it and a banana <clears throat> and that would fill me up quite well uh what's your favorite thing in the world boobs Boobs are my favorite thing. Um, I wish I had more depth to me than that, but it is boobs. Um, <clears throat> what's your favorite color? Um, I like wearing navy a lot. I know it's probably not, you're not asking me like what my favorite, I'm asking myself these questions, most self-indulgent fucking bullshit ever, this shit. But my favorite color is probably navy because I like how it brings up my eyes. What? Uh, color do you wear the most? I seem to be wearing a lot of beige, a lot of beige kind of khaki pants and like beige top, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of liking the kind of desert look at the moment for some reason. Don't know why. Um, what are three words to describe living in Toronto, Canada? Uh, I fucking don't uh, live there. Do you like surprises? Yes, but I did say to Terry that although I would love a surprise birthday sometime, um, I, I'm, I, my whole thing is living in the moment when you're looking forward to things. Living right now in the potential of the future. And I would much rather know that there's a party coming up on Friday for me and all my mates are going to be there. I would get to have the party like for the, every single day. I'd be walking on air knowing that party's coming up in two weeks. And then it would happen and I'd be like, this is amazing. You know? A surprise, you'd be like, oh, that's amazing and a magic night and everything like that. But, and that's also great. But I do like surprises, but I also think that looking forward to something is the most beautiful essence of life. If you could, you know, if you could condense hope into a into a little droplet for your tongue, it's looking forward to something. It's look it's looking forward to something. What's something you had to learn the hard way? I've been smacked in the head multiple times by being a smart arse. Um, you know, I I got I've, got I've gotten lippy with so many people, and I've been had the head smacked off me at least four or five times when I was a kid. You know, properly in proper scraps. Um, so that, I suppose, you know, there's a kind of, you know, if there's someone who's like a big fucking header, right? They're like a storm and you just need to brace and let it pass through. You know what I mean? You're not going to go out there with a fucking umbrella being like, hey, by the way, I don't want you. You know, let it. Indiana, let it go, son. Let it go. Um. What is something you're tired of? I talked about it on the podcast. I talked about it a few times in the Young Hot Guys and I talked about it on my podcast. I'm tired of this work speak, you know, and I, I'm all for educating people on their workers' rights, but this whole kind of like I'm a smug, I'm tired of seeing people on TikTok who are, because they've got a good Sony camera and, uh, you know, depth of focus, <laughs> here we are, uh, that they're experts in either work or psychology or whatever. I'm so tired of armchair experts or whatever. Here, I'm sitting in an armchair. Don't listen to me about anything. I'm a massive hypocrite. But I'm not telling you about anything specific. I'm not saying I'm a comedian. I'm a numpty who's failed upwards through pure random luck, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the 999,999th monkey who accidentally typed Plune. You know what I mean? Who typed the works of Plune, right? It's so random. They've just failed so many times, right? So don't listen to me about advice or anything like that. But I hate I hate people who are like giving completely unsolicited health advice, uh, fitness advice, work advice, and seeing people just be smug about it. And I know people want to kind of fulfill the fantasy of vicariously living through this smug cunt, 
but I there's just a few a few people who are like yeah you know, I've got a text here from someone's boss can you come in on Monday uh, no I'm, I actually have that time booked off well you have to come in anyway see this is what I hate is this guy I hate that shit I hate this shit I hate it I don't feel like I feel like sometimes you're just as a, as a attention seeker I know when the difference between someone who's doing something altruistically or doing something so that people love them you know, I can tell. That's my fucking, that's my strength. I should have said up top. Are you doing this altruistically or is it you doing it just for the attention of everyone looking at you, right? So I don't like when people jump on, try and identify with, I don't, know, I don't need to go into that too much detail. I don't want to call anyone out. Um, What do you turn to when you're sad? I listen to Sade. Uh, I listen to By Your Side by Sade when I'm stressed or when I'm sad. Um podcast as well sometimes podcasts podcasts are a great way of taking me out of my thoughts I listen to other people's thoughts music is a great way if I actually need to think you know and I know the difference has been very handy for me I didn't know for ages I'd be like trying to work listening to like lyrical music and I'm like I can't do that um, you know or, or or like podcast trying to work with a podcast in the background I end up just writing the words the podcast thing so I suppose I turn to kind of very chill music like Sade or Dido I love listening to Dido. I won't go. I won't sleep. I can't breathe. I listen to that a lot when I'm sad. What's a trend that you'd like to see disappear forever? There's a level of greed. There's a level of greed with some things, especially video games at the moment, uh, where, you know, I don't like the trend of releasing a game and then having something that people really want to buy the deluxe version of the game, when literally this is like, three megabytes of a download and it's nothing. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't like the fact that Sony have released, uh, even though I love Sony, PlayStation, thanks for my PlayStation, they've released like this PlayStation portal thing, which is like a handheld that you can remotely play, which it looks great, but they it's only usable, it's on Bluetooth enabled, even though Bluetooth is like the cheapest shit you can just put in. It's just so that you can only use Sony headphones for it. It's just so greedy, you know? Uh and it's just how brazen that greed is. 2K Games uh, from Take-Two Interactive, who do GTA as well, uh, Take-Two Games, like sports games, have like unskippable ads, even though you spent 80 fucking euro on the game. That is a trend, just how brazen the greed is. I'm all fine for if it's a game's free and you have to look at a lot of ads or if you have to pay for a season pass to get new skins for your character or whatever like that, that's fine. You know, you're, you're in for a penny and for a pound, but when you've already bought the game, microtransactions, uh, and just to have it so brazen in your face, that level of greed. You know, there's a reason uh, that video games is the number one, you know, most profitable media there is with, you know, film and music combined to not even come close to games. But do you have to be so fucking brazen about it? Like, you can go see Avatar for fucking eight quid. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. That's your commitment done with the relationship with a film. To spend 80 quid on a game and still have yourself uh, bombarded with advertising, you know, or to feel like you're incomplete. That's a trend I'd like to see done done with. But anyway, look, thank, uh, hey, thanks very much for listening to this pod. Thank you very much to my home here at Headstuff, uh, Headstuff Podcast Network. So look, thank you very much for listening to this pod. Uh, I'm going to have a different bit of setup this time. They very graciously just threw this together for me today. So I really do appreciate the guys. Uh, for Julie and Alan here um, and uh, but yeah thanks very much all the best bye bye <laughs>